and welcome to Business Sense. I'm Ralph Rivas. For today's episode, we have Laurelie Kiambao o Shell, Country Chair of Shell Companies in the Philippines. Ma'am, thanks so much and uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Hello, everyone. So, Glad uh, to be here. So you've been, uh, you were appointed, uh, I believe, last quarter of last year. So uh, you're uh, under a year in the... Uh, in the, as a uh, country chair of shell companies in the Philippines. Uh, so, kumusta po? Uh, house business, uh, any adjustments, especially now that uh, oil prices are really, really high right now, ma'am? <laughs> um, it has been, I think it has been great um, being in the role. Uh, I can say that. And being back in, I think, being in the Philippines, uh, doing this great role in the Philippines, uh, that has been great. It has been a challenging time, as you mentioned. Um, but I've also been in the energy industry for 20 years um, in different parts uh, of the world and also in the Philippines. And it is one of the uh, industries that is very relevant to whatever is happening in the world. And therefore, um, you could also say that throughout my career that I have seen um, just the ups and downs of the external environment and the role that Shell has played through that. Uh, and having said that, uh, Shell uh, in the Philippines has been in the country for 108 years uh, as a partner in nation building. So we have also uh, been through a lot uh, together with the country uh, in the last uh, in the last uh, 108 years. So, uh, as I said earlier, oil prices are really uh, skyrocketing. It's so, uh, the volatility is quite uh, something. I mean, uh, this week, there there's a reduction in prices, but, uh, you know, we'll never really know. I mean, um, maybe next week, we'll, it, it's going to go up again because of all the global uncertainties. So, uh, how do you deal with this? What's your leadership style, especially now that... Uh, uh, all these uncertainties are in place. Yeah, no, indeed, that is correct, Ralph. Um, and I'll, I'll probably res respond to and comment on the oil price uh, first. And indeed, I think the uh, prices uh, and oil prices are pretty much determined by market forces. Uh, so as you said, uh, there is a lot of impact when it comes to geopolitical happenings, uh, for example, anywhere around uh, anywhere around the world. Um, so as a leader, um, but I also think not just as a leader in an energy company, but I guess as a leader these days, uh, everyone has had to manage um, through times of change and through times of uncertainty. Uh, prior to the pandemic, I think we already see that we already saw the world evolving and then we had the pandemic and then now we are emerging from it, um, still defining um, what the future of work will look like. But at the same time, you also see the Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, you still see lockdowns in other parts um, uh, of the world, uh, supply chain constraints. Um, for me, I guess as a leader, you really need to be able to put yourself in a position where you are able to employ different leadership styles. And that means um, continuing to develop yourself and building your leadership toolkit to enable you to flex from one style to another, depending on the circumstances and what the situation demands or what it is that you intend uh, to achieve. I mean, if I look at a certain situation, I think when you are in an urgent uh, situation or when you are in a crisis, uh, then you would most probably adopt a more authoritative um, authoritative mode of leadership uh, style, but it'll be a different approach as well when you are working on innovation, um, which even these times of uncertainty we continue to do, or finding a solution to an end-to-end -end problem. And you would look at a more participative uh, style, for example, and a different range of that uh, in between. Um, leadership is dynamic, um, as the environment we work in uh, is dynamic uh, as well. So it is important that we do adopt a growth mindset and a learner mindset and continue to evolve um, and grow as leaders. Um, and in that sense, I think it's good to have really good self-awareness um, and be able to reflect and learn from your own experiences. At the same time, it is um, also very good to understand the environment you're working in, you're working in, uh, the culture 
you're working in and the people that you are working with and the values uh, that uh, that group, that organization, or that community values and espouses. Mm. Now I can imagine uh, you've been you've been through a lot in your career in Shell. You've been uh, assigned in Iraq, Iran, Pakistan, and Libya. So, uh, how was that, and how did that experience uh, help you prepare for this role here in uh, the Philippines? Okay, I probably qualified the last two, <laughs> the last two countries. Uh, so I did work. So prior to coming back in country, I did work in Iraq. Uh, so I was commuting on a weekly basis uh, to Iraq for 32 months. Uh, and yes, it was complete with a bulletproof vest, armored vehicles. Uh, before that, I was based in Dubai, uh, traveling to Iran on a quarterly basis. And before that, um, I did work on South Asia, Middle East, and North Africa, so covering the countries you mentioned, but I was not based um, uh, in Pakistan or, or Libya um, uh, in, in, that, uh, in that sense. Um, so it has been a very enriching uh, career in Shell. Um, it's also, I think, enriching at the same time. I think I also value um, work that is purpose-driven and, and meaningful. Um, and that has been uh, that has been that, and and that's why I, I'm I'm in. Uh, I've been with Shell for uh, twenty years, but it has also been uh, quite challenging, um, different uh, situations um, in whatever assignment um, I have been uh, I have been in. Uh, when you're working in another country, then it's also different situations per country. What I have always valued working with Shell is just the diversity. Of the people that um, the people that I meet, um, uh, it's it's fascinating and, and interesting. People of all walks of life that you meet, either uh, as your colleagues, but uh, but also in the communities that uh, in the communities that you work with, and it is then looking at the uniqueness in people and how you bring them together, uh, and how you bring out their strengths, um, help people uh, develop. Uh, capabilities and at the same time uh, set up an environment where people can work together, uh, can collaborate and can feel valued. Uh, and with that also have an impact uh, to the community that uh, to the community that uh, we work in. I mean if I look at Iraq, um, we have been out of Iraq uh, when uh, when I decided to join that project, we have been out of Iraq for 30 years. And through that 30 years, you have the Iran-Iraq War, you have the Persian Gulf War, one and two. Um, and then going in and then working in a joint venture uh, with uh, 4,000 to 5,000 uh, Iraqis um, uh, and, and bringing, I think, uh, rehabilitating, rejuvenating and building new facilities to develop their gas, uh, to develop their gas, um, uh, their associated gas uh, was really for me something meaningful. Um, when we came in, um, they only had two hours of electricity in the summer. I was there for 32 months. I guess by the time I left, it was 11 hours. And, and now it is even more than that. Um, I remember when uh, uh, solar lamps were provided uh to some of the communities and how everyone, families went out on a picnic uh, on the streets. Um, so that was Iraq. And then if I look at how we're doing here in Shell in the Philippines, um, our social arm, Filipina Shell Foundation, uh, that has been in the country for 40 years. So Shell itself, 108, a uh, Filipina Shell Foundation for 40 years. Um, and we've had um, 12 million beneficiaries as of August 19, when we celebrated our 40th anniversary. And looking at them, we, we started with capability building, I think around 20 um, beneficiaries. And now we have six pillars. If you're looking at education, energy, environment, health and safety, uh, livelihood, nutrition, and food security. So the impact of what you do, not just uh, in terms of what you're doing for the business, but the impact um, of what you're doing with the communities and the people, um, the people that uh, you work with, uh, it's really, it's really for me a meaningful, a meaningful experience. Not easy, uh, but it it has been a meaningful experience. Mm, very meaningful indeed. Now, uh, any pet projects or new policies that you'd like to implement now that you're uh, you're heading uh, Shell here in the Philippines? I think um, Shell is very good, you could say, fundamentals. Uh, so we have our core values of honesty, integrity, and respect for people. Um, 
And we are very strong in terms of health and safety and in terms of ethics and compliance. And that one, um, when you ask me about change, but I think uh, I will also talk about uh, things that do not change. Uh, uh, and that is uh, and that is that uh, the core values and the focus on safety and ethics and compliance. Uh, so we have our strategy, and our strategy is called Powering Progress. Um, and Powering Progress uh, looks at how um, it is designed to generate value for our shareholders, our customers, um, and the wider society. And it has four main goals. Um, at the heart of it is uh, sustainability. And the four main goals are one, achieving net zero emissions respecting nature, powering lives, and generating shareholder value. I mean, we have been doing these things before, but with the changing world that we live in, um, with a changing environment, then we are looking at how we can do more of this, but then also making sure that it fits with the environment, um, the environment that we work in. Uh, so if you look at achieving net zero emissions, then this is really looking at the climate challenges um, that we have. Um, and what is the role of Shell in that? And we will do this at pace with uh, at pace with society. We're also looking at how we power lives and livelihoods um, in the communities that we work in, but also for the employees that we have. And we have a changing uh, and evolving workforce uh, as well. We have a multi generational workforce in the Philippines. I have a community of four thousand seven hundred uh, people, so that is quite a wide uh, expanse. Uh, respecting nature. Um, we're integrating that into the things that uh, into the uh, things and the projects um, that we also do and the business activities that we do. And of course, generating shareholder value and continuing to look at how we can generate shareholder value, but also improve uh, shareholder value in that uh, in that space. And again, all of this underpinned by core values and uh, safety and ethics and compliance. OK, so let's. Uh... Isa -isa natin, ma no? Because uh, you mentioned a lot, there's diversity, uh, issues on energy. So let's zoom in first on uh, energy, particularly uh, this whole discussion about uh, shift to renewables. And, uh, you know, there's been uh, banks have been, uh, you know, saying that uh, no more coal. Uh, I mean, all these talks about renewable energy and the uh, even executives going as far as saying that the market demands it. So where does uh, Shell fit in this whole uh, narrative, in this conversation of uh, a sustainable future and uh, you know uh, more uh, more renewable energy in uh, portfolios? Yeah. So we are. We are. We will be providing more and cleaner energy uh, energy solutions. Uh, I think yes, you mentioned the world needs uh, the world needs action uh, to reduce carbon emissions and keep global temperatures to below 1.5 degrees Celsius, and that is one of the main goals of the Paris Agreement on uh, on climate change. Um, and that means that our strategy also aims to transition our business uh, to net zero emissions. But that's in step with society. So we are a global company um, that. Uh, operates uh, in over 90, in around 90 countries. And um, the pace of change, uh, for example, in Europe or the UK um, as a country will not be the same as the pace of change in the Philippines. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this purposefully and then profitably. Um, we have been a partner in nation building for 108 years in the Philippines, and we support uh, the government underpinned energy transition agenda. So how are we going to do this? One, we're going to do this through reduction of our own absolute operational emissions. Um, and we are looking at this through the green offices. So a lot of our, our real estate uh, and offices that we work in are actually using solar energy to power the office. We're also looking at reduction of uh, waste, uh, how we conserve water um, and even uh, food waste uh, uh, in that sense. Uh, we have... Um, uh, we have also uh, moved into renewable energy, powering our import terminal and our mobility sites. Uh, so our import terminal, for example, in Tabangao, I mean, we transformed it from a refinery to an import terminal. Um, that's uh, powered 100% um, by renewable energy. And if you look at our mobility sites, what you would refer to before as uh, petrol stations or retail petrol stations, we have over 1,100 and over 100 of those 
also are powered uh, are powered through solar. Um, and we also have sites for the future. So we have four. I mean, the first one's in Silang, uh, Cavite. The other one's in Mahogany and Tagaytay. The third one is in Mandawe. Um, and these sites are, I mean, we use eco bricks uh, for this. Uh, eco bricks would be, uh, you use laminated plastics. So laminated plastics could include um, the containers of our lubricants bottles, um, the cards of our fleet cards. So you shred that, you mix it with cement, and you produce three types of bricks which you could use as buildings or as pavements or as walls. We use that, we have rain catchers. Um, we have rain catchers uh, there as well so that we could recycle uh, rainwater. And we've also had a change in terms of a supply chain model. And that change has resulted uh, to lower carbon emissions. So that's the first thing we're doing, re reducing absolute operational emissions. The second thing we're doing is reducing emissions from the products we sell. So we are looking at low carbon products. Uh, if you look at uh, lubricants, you have Shell Helix Zero W that is produced um, uh, that is produced uh, on a carbon neutral level in terms of emissions. Um, we also have uh, Bitrefresh. So that one is what you use for uh, paving. Um, so Bitrefresh um, actually has forty percent um, less emissions. And I. And as I say, it smells better uh, as well. It smells like uh, detergent. So we are, we are continuing to um, expand and evolve our products. Um, recently, when it comes to low carbon services, then recently we have opened the first our first electronic vehicle charging uh, facility. So this is in Mamplasan, um, uh, two uh, two charging uh, two charging. Uh, stations and uh basically it is an ultra fast charger uh 30 minutes uh you might not i think you might think oh 30 minutes is a long time but if you compare it with other chargers that we have in the philippines which could take 9 to 11 hours uh 30 minutes sounds uh, quite quite fast so we're also involved in the future of electric mobility um in terms of the approach so when you're looking at emissions you're looking at avoiding emissions reducing emissions and for areas that are harder um, harder to reduce at this time or where you have residual emissions, then one of the options is carbon offsets. And we are doing that. So we've offered that to B2B um, customers and recently to B2C uh, customers uh, as well. So that is another offering. Probably one which you could say is low or no carbon would be non-fuels retailing. So you will see the convenience stores um, that we have. Um, in some of the sites, and you also... Uh, on some of the sites, you will have uh, change oil facilities, car wash facilities. We also have um, mobility sites that are biker friendly. Um, so it it really uh, it really means um, it really means we are providing rest spaces uh, and facilities uh, for bikers um, uh, bikers to rest. We have a power trading business um, in the Philippines. I think not many may know about that. At the same time, we have also entered the renewable energy uh, generation space. So we recently announced our partnership with Emerging Power uh, Incorporated to look at onshore solar wind and battery uh, storage facilities uh, as well. So that's the second one. I mean, we're also looking at uh, helping sectors decarbonize. And that's why for construction and road, and we are holding roundtable talks um, and webcasts as well for fleet solutions that help our customers and our partners uh, decarbonize. And I mentioned earlier, about our social arm, which is Filipino Shell. We have 25 uh, programs, but I guess three I would mention would be um, uh, Shell and Explorers. And Shell and Explorers really looks at promoting creative and innovative thinkers. Um, we also have Shell Livewire, so stimulating entrepreneurship, innovation, meaningful employment. And then we have a program called, called Gasmo Bukasko, You Fuel My Future. And this is enabling um, the future for our Shell Four Core Champions. Um, uh, so uh, these are uh, members of our community who greet you with a smile um, when you go to our stations and provide such tremendous service, um, uh, training them through technical and vocational uh, training as well. Uh, so it, it is quite a lot, uh, uh, but in, indeed, I think um, uh, that is how we are uh, planning for the future and moving for moving towards the future and acting to achieve it. Now I want to zoom in on uh, your brief discussion on uh, your future project, uh, 
future and current uh, products. So uh, renewables, that was interesting. So uh, describe to us the uh, how the portfolio of Shell would look like, say, 20, 50 years, if you can disclose so. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, I, I wish I mean, I wish I could do that with such clarity. I think the job would be so much better uh, if I do that. Um, but the world is evolving. So we are evolving um, in that uh, in that space. So the footprint, our footprint in the Philippines is also changing. I think one thing I can say is that we are here to stay and we are here. Uh, we are here to grow, uh, but it will be as um I mentioned a different uh, portfolio from a downstream perspective then we are continuing to grow our downstream business so i mentioned the retail side so we are evolving that um, uh, beyond being a retail petrol site to become a mobility destination and that's why we have offerings not just for motorists but for passengers um, uh, for passengers as well and we are expanding that uh, that network if you look at where the philippines is compared with our other asian countries we have we still have a uh, a very low motorization rate compared to other countries i mean quite not feel like that um when you are in metro manila but that is certainly uh the case uh so we are continuing to grow our downstream network so we are growing by 40 to 60 um, mobility sites until um until 20, uh, 2025. Uh, and with that, as I mentioned, reducing uh, carbon emissions um, and decarbonizing in terms of our operations. Now, to be able to support uh, that growth, I mean, which is driven really by um, society's growth and our projections, then we need to make sure that we have a good supply chain behind it. And therefore, we are also putting in additions uh, to the supply chain uh, that we have. Uh, in April this year, we recently broke ground. And so we have 24 uh, terminals around the country, but we have um, three medium range capable um, terminals and we have gone on our fourth one uh, and we broke ground in Darong, Davao City uh, in April this year. And we are aiming um, to have five by 2025. And that is to support what I mentioned, the growth on, on the networks. Um, we continue to look at uh, to innovate in terms of the products that um, the products that uh, we offer, um, and that is a, a few of the things that I mentioned: the fuel space, but also um, uh, in the non uh, in the non fuels uh, space as well. So, from a downstream perspective, uh, that is what uh, we are doing. Um, if I look at the renewable space, uh, then. Uh, the power trading business, we are on our third year. Um, uh, as I mentioned, that is growing and we're looking at commercial and industrial customers uh, in that space. And then from the power trading piece, then we are looking at uh, power generation. And that's why um, we have uh, signed an agreement to form a joint venture. And we will continue to look at, uh, so aside from this uh, uh, this new agreement, then we are continuing to look at other spaces as well. Um, where we can leverage on the global expertise and the technology that we have um, and the learnings that we have uh, from other countries and as applicable and as relevant, bring them here in country uh, in the Philippines. Um, I think one thing as well that um, people might not know is we also have um, a big uh, group of uh, shell business operations uh, here in the Philippines. Um, it started with, I think, 15, 16 years ago, and we're now at 4,200. So we grew during the pandemic, and we're continuing uh, We're continuing uh, to grow. So under our shell business operations, then we have functional support, um, such as finance, human resources, contracting and procurement, or customer operations, uh, trading and supply operations. But um, we're also expanding it. Uh, so our shell business operations actually includes technical and engineering services. So we support assets from all around the world. And we're also doing marketing and advertising. 
Uh, in fact, most of the brand's work that we do um, for Shell as a brand globally, it's being done internally here in um, uh, here in Metro uh, here in Metro Manila. Um, we are also starting to partner closely with our business uh, operations, just such as mobility. So some of the roles that we have from the business side is also in, in Shell business operations. Um, technology. So we are leveraging on uh, technology and digital tools as we ensure that we continue to progress uh, and, and really work on our process excellence, but at the same time, also look at um, digital transformation, uh, digital transformation as well. So there are a lot of opportunities, um, I guess, uh, not as long term as a, a view um, as you wanted, uh, as you wanted to ask me. Uh, but uh, I think as evidence by, by what I mentioned, then definitely an evolving footprint uh, and a growing footprint here in the country. Now, uh, the, the current administration, President Marcos, has expressed uh, that he is uh, prioritizing the energy sector, especially uh, with lots of uncertainties in the countries. Uh, you know, uh, in recent weeks, outages here and there and the global oil prices still uncertain. So uh, what are your thoughts of, uh, say, uh, the, the, the policies that he has uh, expressed so far? And there are also talks of nuclear energy. So uh, do you have any thoughts on that? So you are correct. Um, I think I do agree. In this, I, I do agree that we need to focus on the energy security uh, of our country. Um, we have plans for growth, and I think we have, as a country, have ambitious plans for growth. Um, and that means that um, that means that you're also looking at. If you look at the growth of other countries um, uh, and how that has progressed, then when in the past, when other countries have grown, then there has also been a lot of reliance in terms of uh, hydrocarbons and in terms of fossil fuels. Uh, these days, we do need to look at the balance uh, in terms of pushing forward uh, socioeconomic growth, but then also looking at uh, climate change and how we take care of the environment. Um, and that means that we need to look closely at the projected uh, energy demand that we have, and then looking at what are the sources of supply. I think from a demand perspective, and as you grow, um, it is expected that your energy needs grow with that. But for me, I would also call on efficiency uh, in terms of managing the demand and really making sure that um, we are not wasteful uh, in terms of the energy that um, we are using. And that means that uh, we have a good view of a realistic uh, demand uh, where it is efficient, and then look at possible sources of uh, possible sources of, of energy. Um, but then also looking, I guess, the other thing on that um, here in the Philippines is affordability as well. Um, we need to make sure that it is also affordable um, uh, for us uh, for us Filipinos. And there can be a wide range. Of, um, there can be a wide range of solutions um, in place. Um, and even when you talk about, if you talk about indigenous sources, hydrocarbons, renewable, uh, there can be a path uh, in terms of how you really maximize and utilize the country's natural resources at the same time doing so and doing that in a way that is efficient and in a way that also takes care uh, of the environment. Uh, and with that, uh, are the varying solutions that we have, including uh, including nuclear energy, uh, as an option, uh, should the government uh, decide to do so. Mm. Now, I will close this interview uh, with uh, mag mag one year na po kayo as uh, the president and CEO of Filipina Shell and leading the uh, Shell companies in the Philippines, and uh, you're the first Filipina to be appointed as such. So. Uh, how do you now ensure moving forward uh, to continue a trend of diversity in the workplace and uh, uh, any future plans that we uh, we should anticipate? Thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Ralph. Uh, it is an honor. I, I think uh, it is an honor uh, for me to be the first female um, president um, and country chair uh, in Shell after 108 years. Um, although I, 
as I said, I don't really believe that leadership has a gender. Um, and, and I do, I think for me, moving forward, uh, I think I do hope that uh, we will come to a time uh, that indeed uh, it is more and more recognized that uh, uh, leadership does not have uh, have a, a gender. But I do value, I do value the just the focus of Shell when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, and I mentioned earlier our strategy, and I'm really pleased that one of that is powering lives, um, because part of powering lives, aside from um, uh, powering lives and livelihoods with our energy products, is also looking at our company. And we are working to become one of the most diverse and inclusive companies uh, in the world, where everyone feels valued and respected. Uh, and we are focusing on, on gender, for one, because that still needs uh, attention. Um, but the other areas we're looking at will be is LGBT plus and also uh, persons with disability and race and ethnicity uh, as well. I really believe that uh, with the, with just the challenges that we face today, how the world is evolving, um, as a company, we need to be reflective of society and we need to be reflective of the customers uh, that we have. And if you are looking at solutions for the future, and if you are looking at innovation, I think just the power of diverse thinking and the power of the different perspectives that we will have when it's reflective of the society that we serve and the customers that we serve uh, will really propel us, uh, will really propel us to be one of the more, most successful companies uh, in the country and in the world. Now, having said that, diversity is one thing, um, but you can only unleash the power of diversity if you build an inclusive space. And building an inclusive space means that actively respecting and embracing and valuing the uniqueness of each other as a source of strength and creating an environment where everyone can be themselves, where everyone uh, can speak up, uh, where everyone um, will have psychological safety. And that drives uh, that really drives human performance as well, will allow us to really um, unleash the power of that uh, diversity. So I do hope to see more of that. Um, and I do hope um, to push forward the gender agenda, but also go beyond gender and looking at other areas of diversity and, and really recognizing and celebrating the uniqueness of each individual and the uniqueness of people and putting that in an environment uh, where they can be themselves and speak up and really contribute uh, in terms of how we can shape the future or reimagine the future moving forward. And on that note, thank you so much, Laurie Lee Kiambao Oshal, Country Chair of Shell Companies in the Philippines. This has been another episode of Business Sense. I'm Ralph Rivas. Thanks for watching.